Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is for education purpose only. This is the case of the idol quadruples. May the four victims rest in peace. Condolence to the families. And may the correct justice be served. Today I'd like to share strictly my opinion the reason I believe that there was more than one target and the reason I believe why it could have been separate motives and even timings so, like I said, this is for education purposes only. And it's all my opinion, but there's some facts to where I got my opinion from. To start with, we are aware that 1122 Kings Road was called his students home. There were five young women who shared the house. The sixth one was on the rent lease, but I believe she never moved in, Ashley. But we know that Students used to gather here to party, to gather around, because obviously it was off campus. So by gathering around, I'm sure the gathering and the crowd gets larger, because all of the five students who were roommates in 1122 Kings Road would all definitely have friends and their friends have friends from the sororities and from the frats and they become friends and they held parties. It was a party venue. And like Kaylee's sister said, there were many students and there are many people who had the code the front door code of the source let's not forget there wasn't any forced entry to the source the police have never told us if the suspect came from the sliding door or the front door they thought it's most likely the sliding door but there was no for century. So did somebody intentionally leave the door open, the sliding door? Or did someone come in from the front door? That makes more sense to me because the front door was left wide open. And like Kaylee's sister said once again, many people had the coat to the front door. I've noticed many people, I must have spoken about it once or twice, speak about the rug theory, and it can't be possible. Anything's possible in this case because they put it on gag order early on. But it's not many people who talk about the frats, and I wonder why. I personally believe the big part the big part in at least my theory that they could be involved or they knew what was going to go down. Allegedly. The reason I say that is in the beginning we were told that the timeline was between 3 to 4 a.m. The only people we saw hanging around whether it was the three boys at Banfield the alcohol minus stop, 
the three twenty year old boys, Saeed with the bushy eyebrows, the four figures running from eleven twenty two King's Roadside to Birds, the Sigma Khan, allegedly. They're running from the alleyway. Pay attention to the people and the timing. That was when Kaylee and Maddie called Jack D. Loss. That was at 2.52. At 2.54, we hear some of the sounds like the girls yelling, Stop it, stop. We hear it on the body cam of the police officer at Banfield. Could it have come out? come from inside the house, outside the house, the alleyway, Queen's apartment, parking place, the outskirts. It could have come from anywhere. It could have been somebody playing or it could have been somebody seriously crying out for help. But I want to know why the Sigma Chi boys are not so mentioned. in our speculations because not only is, is it a speculation but if you break it down from the 4chan theory to watching the figures running at 316 312 sorry watching the three boys at Banfield and Said from 255 I believe right up to that's right after the girls, three minutes after the girls call Jack D, Kaylee and Maddie. So I believe there were at least one target in, on each floor. That's what I personally believe. Because let's say if the target was just upstairs, they wouldn't have needed to go to the second floor. I know people may say, yeah, Zana or he saw them or saw the suspect or suspects. That's possible, but I personally believe that there was at least one target on each floor or maybe all four were the targets. The reason I always say I believe Kaylee was one of the main targets is because they could have done it any other day but they chose to do it the only weekend that Kaylee came there. So I wonder what was preventing Kaylee the month before she came back on the 13th of November, that unfortunate night, what made Kaylee come back? And what made Kaylee stay at her mother and father's house? I know she was finishing her degree, but she still had a couple of exams left. Did she just come to show off her Land Rover like her parents said? Or maybe she was hiding it from her parents. Maybe Maddie asked her to come. Maybe they're in some kind of trouble. There was definitely something going on in 1122 Kings Road. And let's not forget, in the beginning, the police said it could have been a burglary gone wrong. I wonder what it was in this house that caused a fortune for the police to have thought it could have been a burglary gone wrong. This is right before they put this case on Geiger order. I wonder why. 
and I always found it strange. This is my personal opinion that there wasn't any S E X U A L assault. That makes me believe more like this was somebody who had revenge, bitterness, jealousness towards the victims. That's why it looked to me more like the 4chan theory, the targets they said, how they would do it in 19 minutes, that all lines up for me. I believe Kaylee was one of the main targets because of the way she was unlived and her injuries were worse than Maddie's and the others according to what her parents said. This is what the coroner told them before this case was put on gag order. So the way the person was assaulted, I think, has definitely a lot to say. There could have been more ang anger, revenge, hate, bitterness towards the person who was the target. Or maybe it could be possible that the person just got in the way and it was the other person that was the target but yet again it could have been Maddie that was the target too because Maddie was warned by Jack Schwalter he said you know they're going to get you for that girls you know they're going to get you for that Maddie and two hours later Maddie Kaylee Zana and E were gone. And the knife sheet whether the suspect forgot it there or whether it was planted there was found near Maddie. So Maddie could have been the target too. But Down says I believe that Zana and E did have a fight that night with David Lott, allegedly, and David B. And there were some harsh words about rugs and steroids exchange. So it could be possible that somebody on rugs, especially steroids, could be full of rage that could have caused some serious harm to the couple. I possibly believe that this was all pre-planned. That's why it lands up with the fortune. They said they, do it, they would do it in 19 minutes. There was definitely parties going on here we can clearly see that this was in September I believe twenty twenty two like six seven weeks before the quadruples we have Emma Belly who was involved in an overdose case, she and her boyfriend were both uh, allegedly criminals parting in this house. What was actually going on in this house? I know these are college students, but look at how they dress. There's always loud music, loud partying, 
and nobody seemed to be have been listening to the police. I wonder who was using the spare room on the ground floor. Is that what the police meant by a burglary gone wrong? Allegedly, that light was always on. Wonder who was paying for the lights? Were they subletting it to someone else? Was something being stored there? Let's not forget we have the Uber driver who told Idaho local news that he drove many pe people to 1122 Kings Road to purchase drugs. Where were these two when the unalivings happened? Hunter was the one who called 911. What is strange is that DM or BF or the boat decided to call him eight hours later, allegedly before even calling 911. Was he subletting from the south? I wonder. Was this some kind of ways of getting change and money that was going on in the south, whether it was rugs or whatever it was? It could have been more than parting, I'm just saying. If you'll check, there's many frats, like in North Carolina and Washington, in these last years that have got caught with a lot of rugs, worth thousands and thousands and a million. We're in and out of this house, factoring to the case against Brian Koberger. The fact that this Kings Road house was a party house is a huge big deal because it expands the universe of suspects. Who was there at the time of the murders? What was their connection to the victims? Who had access to this home before? Did they have possible motive to kill? For months we've been calling this a party house. This is a party venue. One of the most important parts of this case is that DNA. And what we know is this is a party house. We know that there were hundreds of kids in this house it could even have included him. And the thing is, is if he was in this house, are you suggesting that these four know everybody who's been there? I doubt that. And as a result, if he says, I was in this house before, that's why my DNA is in this house. Now we talk about that, and we talk about DNA transfer, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you might have a completely different trial. So It'll be interesting when the trial begins to hear how the jury will come to their own decision making by watching the Favreau camera of the FBI, the reconstruction version of the house itself. It's not going to look like the real thing. Let's be honest. It's important that the jury could have taken a visit, a tour, one or two days proper tour, and stood everywhere, like the balcony, inside the third floor, in Maddie's room, in Zana's room, in Kaylee's room, at the first floor, at the sliding door, outside, everywhere, just to hear what they think could they, they could pers possibly hear from just, say, the third floor to somebody walking down the steps to see if D M is witness statements Makes sense. 
as the three unidentified male DNAs. I really do believe that something could have definitely been hidden in the souls because they did say from the very beginning, the police said that it could have been a burglary ground wrong. This is from ABC News. This is for fair use purpose. This clip was from in the beginning. Sorry, it's from CNN News. It was from the beginning of the case. And I played this in my channel a couple of times, but it's been a while. I think it's really important for this case. Let's pay attention to exactly what she says, because I believe it is a key point. It gives us a clue of something that I hardly hear anyone discussing about. Asked about the threat level to the community given the initial confusion of that message and uh, Aaron Snell here told me that it's always a good idea to be vigilant since the suspect hasn't been caught, saying that it's a good idea to walk in pairs, to lock doors at night, and he did not rule out the possibility of perhaps more than one person responsible for these killings. Uh, I also asked about this being a targeted attack, and he reiterated that they still believe that it was based on evidence found at the scene and the fact that two people in the house survived the attack. So if it were a bit more uh, non-discriminate that perhaps everyone might have died. We hope to hear much more information coming out at a press conference tomorrow at 1 p.m. local time, John. So the police told Natasha that it was a targeted attack because there was evidence found at the crime scene. I wonder what evidence was found. And I remember Fox News saying that there was red liquid on the walls. So I play this once again. I find this to be a very important clue. Asked about the threat level to the community given the initial confusion of that message and uh, Aaron Snell here told me that it's always a good idea to be vigilant since the suspect hasn't been caught, saying that it's a good idea to walk in pairs, to lock doors at night, and he did not rule out the possibility of perhaps more than one person responsible for these killings. Uh, I also asked about this being a targeted attack, and he reiterated that they still believe that it was, based on evidence found at the scene and the fact that two people in the house survived the attack. So if it were a bit more uh, non-discriminate that perhaps everyone might have died, we hope to hear much more information coming out at a press conference tomorrow at 1 p.m. local time, John. So the police believe that it was a targeted attack because of the evidence found in the crime scene. This was in the beginning of the case. The script was from the beginning of the, this case. And I'm sure that was the time there wasn't a gag order put on the case. So there was evidence found at the crime scene. I don't believe she's talking about the glove and the fingerprints and the DNA on the knife sheet because those would have been DNA evidence. But that could be a possibility too. But she's talking about the DNA evidence, but she said evidence was found in the crime scene and the chief told her that there could be other suspects it wasn't only guaranteed one suspect so how did they come to this conclusion that it was only brian christopher coble widening the area as they say, expect by police. Uh, do we have any, have they let anything 
any knowledge of, come out about whether or not they believe this is someone who knew these victims or whether or not they think this is some sort of outside serial killer crazed person? Is there any indication of which way this is lo- leading right now? No, uh, the one nugget that they gave us early on is that law enforcement believes that this was a targeted killing of these young uh, four students. And so as a result of that, uh, one of the things that we tried to establish and we don't know and we've tried to get it from law enforcement is do they actually know who was actually targeted here, Mark, uh, Martha? And second of all, uh, what was the focus and the motive for targeting that one person? We don't know if it was any of the individuals that were killed here or the two surviving individuals. Um, a grid of the individuals that were killed here are the two surviving individuals. Um, a grid search of this area, just to clear it, I'm not saying that the murder weapon is back here, but primarily to make a determination if there is any physical evidence back here. Martha, this was a very gruesome murder scene according to the medical examiner. According to the medical examiner, there was actually blood on the walls. And I can... According to the police, there was red liquid on the walls. Is that why they cut a piece of the wall or was it the floor in the beginning of this case? from 1122 Kings Road, before they demolished the house. This was the white Hyundai Elantra parked in front of Jack D's house. It was allegedly his. I think the suspect or suspects must have been looking at Maddie from here. Are they trying to see if they could have jumped through the late railing? I don't think so. Maddie's window, I think it's the windows that you pull from down upwards. We still do not know where the entry point was. Was it from the windows? Was it from the sliding door? Many people have the access code to the front door. But I hope you got the nuggets from in the beginning of this case. CNN News said, The reporter Natasha said that she was told that evidence was found in the crime scene. She didn't say to if it was DNA evidence or what kind of evidence, but evidence was found. That's how the police knew it was a targeted attack. But I personally believe there could have been all four victims that were the target. or it was at least one on each floor. Others, they wouldn't have needed to go to both the floors. They would have just gone to the floor the, the target was in. They're clearly looking at Maddie's window. The forensic team were really busy with this room. That's why I wonder why was the lights always on? There was his golf set was there and many other things. Was whatever in that room, whatever somebody was storing that room like money, rugs, allegedly, could have been the burglary gone wrong because the cases are not is on gag order, they're not going to let us know. 
if something go wrong. These could have been organizations. Too young, a few hours ago, they told me something that was pretty interesting. We've been talking about that backsliding door so much, but the front door, I'm told by a neighbor who walked by that morning and was coming back to his apartment, was wide open around 8.39 a.m. He told me that he gave that information to investigators, but we hadn't heard too much about that front door. Right. So the front door was left wide open. We heard that from many reporters. A neighbor told them that the front door was wide open. I'm sure the houses nearby 1122 Kings Road must have heard people fighting for their lives. If they heard the third, in my opinion, they must have definitely heard everything else. Nobody wants to interfere if they can hear people fighting for their lives and being unalive and just say if it's organization or anyone involved, People will try to be discreet, especially if they know that it's a high risk for themselves to talk. For all you know, they could have done some things to the victims from the outside. They could have been dragging them and people could have watched and maybe allegedly they couldn't say anything. Just my theory. I must have definitely heard people fighting for their life. And I really believe that Kaylee was sleeping in her room with Murphy, her dog. Because DM allegedly heard her saying, there's someone here. And she heard, DM said she heard Somebody who she thought was Kaylee playing with her dog. Kaylee must have heard Maddie getting hurt or yelling out for life, allegedly, to the morning. She must have gone to see what happened and the person or the people, suspects or suspect, must have thrown on the bed. The position she was found, like her parents said. Anything is possible. But I believe Kelly was one of the main victims because her injuries, according to her parents, would have explained it. But Zana fought for life too, so she could have been one of the main targets. So she fought for life. Maddie could have been one of the main targets because. It seems, according to the affidavit, that the knife sheet, if it was Brian's or whoever's, started near Maddie, allegedly. And it could have been E, or E could have been protecting Zana. But I believe all four of them could have been targets of organizations and the frats. The frats are organizations too. Let me know what you think. May the four rest in peace. The Congalvis family made it sound like Maddie was the main target. That Brian was sending her DMs. So was it Maddie who was the main target, or Kaylee, or Zano, or E? I believe it was one on each floor. One on the second floor, and one on the third floor. And I wouldn't be surprised if they used both the front and the back entrance of the house to come in. DM could have got confused. Maybe DM knows and BF knows they have a scapato evidence but they're scared to talk. It could be possible. Please like, share and subscribe. Have a lovely weekend.